responses to reviewers or what can be as difficult as revising the paper themselves mm -hmm. and that you, you want to be diplomatic you want to say longer, that's a longer. great point and I've done this not no yeah. I won't do that even if you don't really do very much you know and, and as an editor I see this more than most reviewers see this is where two reviews are completely different uh, you know one loves the paper one tears it apart you know, and I, as the editor, either find a third reviewer or I have to read it myself, and I kind of have to navigate those. And I've had, I've had cases, so I have a, a colleague in California who wrote what I thought was a beautiful paper in uh, uh, J.J.R. Oceans. I was a reviewer for it. It was one of the few papers I ever said, except as is, and it was rejected. <laughs> and it was a Chiro Fukumori. I was writing one on the adjoint and interpreting it. And I go. Many people understand. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was the problem. But he did a very good job of explaining it, and so then he submitted it to Journal of Physical Oceanography, and I got the review like, you know, another three months later. And I actually called Achiro, and I says, "Wait, are you submitting the exact same paper to another journal? That's not ethical." And that's when he told me that it was rejected. And that's why I says, "Well, all right, this is easy. Yeah, I'll accept this." And I said, "Accept." <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it happens. Uh, I mean, so I review anywhere between 150 and 200 papers a year mm -hmm. as the editor. That's how many I handle. And frankly, we are looking for ways to get rid of papers uh, and reject <laughs> yeah. them. And for some of the journals, like not Nature, Science, Geophysical Research Letters, they get hundreds, if not thousands, of articles. <laughs> and they will just more happily reject one than accept one. Okay. Yeah. So don't take it personally in, in those cases. Which, which is, you know, this whole process of, um, you know, getting your reviews back and getting a re rejection. Yeah. Don't take it personal because no. we've all been rejected. Oh, yeah. You know, and many times. Yeah. And, and I think perseverance is important yeah. if you think you've got a good message and, and uh, you know, you, you didn't hit, well, maybe it didn't hit for a number of reasons. Maybe you, you know, when you, when you go for one of these uh, exceptional journals, the uh, acceptance rate's 5%, you know, yeah. so um, you're more likely, you know, you got a 1 in 20 shot. So, I mean, that's, it's great to target that, uh, but don't put your ego on the line, you know, yeah. for a, a journal like that, because more often than not, as Don said, they're looking for ways to yeah. throw it in a wastebasket but, as opposed to actually accept it. But one thing I will caution you is that if the paper was rejected from one journal, don't submit the exact same paper to another journal unless you're sure that there was no problems with it. If, if it was rejected and the reviewers had significant comments, incorporate those into the one before you submit it to a new journal. I have several times gotten the exact same pathetic paper in many, many journals. And mm -hmm. that's when I start making snarky comments yeah. in yes. my reviews. Me too. Yeah. Well, not snarky, but yeah. <laughs> I get, I've had the same experience. Yeah. And you won't generally get a, a review from science or nature. They'll just say rejected. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's a, it's hard to actually incorporate yeah. their comments. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, when I, when I see the exact same paper after yeah. I just said reject, yeah. and then they yeah. send it without a single change, that pisses me off. Oh yeah, that that that's oh, yeah. that that'll piss off an it's editor like, and a reviewer. Don't, don't do it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> as an editor, I, what really gets me is when somebody not only submits it without changing a word, but they won't even format it. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. That 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 that's <laughs> that's a, that's an absolute telltale. That yeah. They, so so that's another point is that when you're submitting to a journal, know the style of the journal and write the paper in the style of the journal. Don't just do a science <coughs> journal formatting and submit it to Journal of Physical Oceanography. People don't like that. Yeah, several questions. Yeah, well, um, I was just gonna ask, like, what is the average like number of times that you have to submit a paper before it gets accepted? Like, do you generally submit it multiple times or like, Often is it accepted to the first one? You mean through multiple after rounds revisions? of review or just yeah, after yeah. revisions or journals? Yeah, you have to go to another journal. Yeah. For, for me, with subject journals, very rarely if it's a good paper. For nature, yeah. it's really potluck if it even gets into review, for example. So often then you're sending that to a, 
if you think you've got something really hot, people will often send it around nature science and gradually go down the tree. Yeah. But those are exceptions, I think. Yeah. I can speak to that. I had uh, the, my most cited paper, which is approaching a thousand, was rejected by Science, Nature, and Coral Reefs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, actually, I think most of us have probably had papers that were rejected by Science and Nature and then get high hits in another yeah. journal. So. Yeah. I mean, I, one of my postdocs, my first postdocs here, he was adamant about submitting one of his papers, which was a really good paper, uh, to science and nature. And it didn't even go into the review process for either one of them. But it, I had told him to submit it to journal, uh, to physical research letters to begin with. And it came back without any revision necessary, publish as is. And it's, you know, very, very highly cited. So it's one of those things, you know, know your audience and know yeah. what gets published in those journals. Yeah. So the point of your question is, um, what's your threshold of pain? Yeah. You know, if you, if you want to, you know, if you want to, um, you know, take that high risk, high reward kind of thing, if you actually want to publish your thing, find the appropriate disciplinary yeah. journal. Yeah. Right? yeah. You know, where, where are people writing for in the citations that you actually yeah. are using? Yeah. Right? yeah. That's the sweet spot. So it, it, if a paper is rejected from definitely one of the disciplinary journals, there's probably a good reason for that. Uh, there's there's some mm -hmm. probably some fairly major problems with the paper. And so you have to take a step back and think about the message. But if it gets rejected from one of these high impact, you know, kind of more... Uh, um, nature science. Selling your science yeah. than actually explaining your science type of journals, then, yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. In fact, I would start off with one of the discipline journals to begin with. I think the only subject journal I didn't even get reviewed in was I did, it was one of my first papers and my cover letter didn't really say anything. Mm -hmm. So writing a cover letter that's, you know, take the time just to maybe say what the important points are, just, yeah. you know, we'll say why it's suitable for that journal if it's something that could be questionable but otherwise I think you know editors often will more likely to give major revisions if there's a chance the paper is you know publishable in some form um, so if it's been rejected then the, as Don says there's really something wrong that needs to be addressed good question I guess Mike um, <laughs> in the context that you were talking about like some of those journals may receive you know hundreds if not thousands of submissions would you say there may be like an ideal time to submit a paper where it may be one out of a hundred versus one out of five hundred. So I can tell you the worst time to submit a paper. <laughs> the worst time to submit a paper is in December. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in December, I got slammed with about two dozen papers submitted the first two weeks of December. Try to find reviewers for those papers. Uh, yeah, so, you know, yeah. some of them I'm still trying to find reviewers yeah. for. So the worst time, and everybody wants to get it done before the end of the year, says, so for in their faculty evaluation or whatever, they could say, <laughs> Submit. paper submitted. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't do that. Um, as far as the best time, I, I can't say. But I, definitely not around a major conference. So, so, for example, like most of the major <coughs> discipline journals are sponsored by an association. So don't do it around their major conference. Mm -hmm. Often the editors will be at the conferences yeah. as well. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, you know, this, you know, Tim mentions the editors. Um, sometimes you can lay the groundwork for your paper by actually talking to an editor oh, yeah. and say, look, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I've got this idea for this paper and it's based on this and that and, yeah. you know, I'm probably going to submit it. You got any suggestions, you know, for, you know, like, because a lot of times um, editors appreciate it when you actually nominate reviewers, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they may not take, you yeah. know, they'll probably take one maybe off your list, but still, um, that allows you to um, prepare the battlefield a little bit, you know, so... Don't discount that as an opportunity to, you know, um, soften them up a little bit. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I've had several people approach me with their paper and said, I'm not sure if it's relevant to your journal. Do you think it is? And I will say yes or no. Uh, Steve brought up the thing about reviewers. 
And so that's kind of a pet peeve of mine. Um, when you're look at giving the list of reviewers, try to give the editor as many potential names as possible. Because frankly, we cannot be an expert in everything. Uh, and we don't know everybody in the field. Uh, so I get a lot of papers on uh, ocean color in JGR Oceans. And I'm not an expert in that field. I don't know who are the good reviewers. But when the all reviewers are from China, I'm a little bit dubious if the authors are Chinese. Yeah. And so I have to find that my people here in Europe are in the United States to kind of give me a feel. So definitely spread your reviewers out. Uh, don't focus on just United States, European. There's lots of good people in Europe, lots of good people in China, lots of good people in South America. You know, give us all kinds of names. And don't always focus on the most senior people. Uh, I really encourage you to give postdocs, even senior students who are <coughs> near graduation. Some of the best reviews I have received as an mm -hmm. editor have been from senior students or postdocs. In fact, most of the time I actually have an ongoing list of very senior people that I will not ask to give a review because they either don't respond or they give really crappy reviews. Because sometimes they're really busy. They're really busy. <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> may, may, you know, yeah, if you want Walter Monk to review your paper, yeah, it's not going to happen. Um, although he does review papers every so often. <laughs> uh, but, he just uh, turned how old? Oh, he's 100, yeah. 100, 100, 100 yeah. I think he's 101 or two, yeah. Um, but um, uh, <laughs> definitely give us a nice list. Mm -hmm. In a well-rounded list, you know, the other thing that the editorial board of JGR Oceans is really, you know, trying to promote is we don't want a bunch of old white men reviewing every single paper. So we really encourage, you know, a diverse uh, reviewer pool as well. And that helps from you putting names forward for us to look at. And if you suggest right. someone as a reviewer, for God's sakes, make sure you've cited them appropriately. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. for sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Going back to a number of reviewers, you'd, you'd be surprised how many, how, many time, how many requests you have to send out to get a reviewer. Oh, God. I know, so many people just say no. There, there, there are so many papers where I've gone through 20 names. And in fact, one of them I finally rejected because I said, look, I cannot find anybody to review this paper, and if 25 people have said that they're not interested in reviewing it, it tells me that there's nothing really exciting about this paper. So, yeah, find people who you think would be interested in it and would be an expert in the field, and, you know, avoid your friends. Avoid, you know, your postdoc advisor or whatever. But, you know, if it's someone that you met at a conference that's doing similar work to you and they're a postdoc, there's nothing wrong with having them review your paper if they're knowledgeable in the field. Yeah, Gary. I was just going to add something when you were talking about students doing reviews. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's a really important part of your education. And yeah. you find it very valuable, you know, the, the critical thinking aspect. How do you evaluate... And I always require my students <coughs> to do it, and the way it works is that an editor will ask me to review <coughs> a paper, and I say, I don't have time, but I have this excellent student, and I promise you that I will review their review. Yeah. You know, so I will kind of look over the shoulder and kind of help through the first couple of times they do it. Yeah. You should ask your advisors to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I do that. So yeah. set you up with some reviews I, and also help you. That, that, what, what, what I like is, and, and this is the other thing with reviews. Yeah, with, 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 a, with a lot of reviewers. Yeah, I think you had Phil review one for me. Um, <clears throat> but um, with, with, with reviewers, if you're asked to review a paper and you can't do it, but you know someone who can, please give the editor that name mm -hmm. because that helps us a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and yeah, I get uh, senior people giving me names of postdocs or their students all the time. 
and I am 100% sure to take that name because if that's a good you know, scientist and has a good reputation, I believe then that their student or postdoc is yeah. going to do it well. Frank, you had a question? Um, yeah, and this kind of goes to Tim as well, and Don especially. But you were talking about submitting to different journals and being interdisciplinary. <coughs> Do you have any pointers as far as submitting to different journals uh, when you're reaching different topics as well? Uh, is that something that you want to really emphasize in your cover letter to the journal? Or? Um, I tend to overwork my cover letters after being rejected from that one ages ago, but especially <laughs> for like somewhere like nature, you, I always try and work in how it will be of interest to all these different fields. Because for example, they're not looking for someone who does chemical oceanography, they're looking for someone in, in <coughs> cell science who's going to read it and think this is... You know, this is exciting. Um, in terms of subject specific, uh, it sort of depends on the, you know, for chemical oceanography with metals, we tend to go through things like um, global biogeochemical cycles, and then there's a few geochemical journals, chemical geology. They're all sort of the same kind of field, but they have slightly different emphasis. Some are slightly more, like, slightly, slightly longer or more thoughtful, but then some are slightly higher impact. So you kind of have to balance perhaps how exciting the, the sub subject matter is. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, I think, you know, Steve said, you know, know your audience and uh, know what the journal is known for. And if a lot of the studies that you're citing were published in a certain journal, then that is a good indication that that's relevant to what you're doing. And so I frankly think it's a waste of time and energy to go for a high impact journal off the bat unless you are really convinced that it's a very mm -hmm. exciting new yeah. problem. Because frankly, my experience with publications in nature and science are very limited and they have taken sometimes over a year and a half to get the editor to finally say, okay, submit yeah. the paper. And in that time, I could have submitted it to another journal, had it published, getting citations. That's really the key to it. Particularly, you know, uh, if it's based on a thesis. You yeah. want to start out, yeah. you know, on a good foot. You know, <coughs> you don't, don't want to sort of beat yeah. your brains out on, yeah. on the first couple. Because yeah. those short journals have such restrictive formatting, you know. Yeah. Your abstract must be this length. Your word limit must be this length. Yeah. The time it takes to get your paper into that format for them just to say, "Oh, we're not." And and, at and, it. and and frankly, it's as a reader, I hate journals where all the details are in the supplemental material, <laughs> and the stuff up front is just more of an advertisement. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's it's not a good way to read the study. Uh, so I I I've only published in those journals because my co-authors have wanted to publish in those journals. I've never actually wanted to submit to any of those. Because I like the old school format where you kind of go methodically through mm -hmm. everything. That was a good this point. It's changed now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, well, it's more and yeah. more people want this, like the details are in the... the supplemental, supplemental material, I hate that. Because mm -hmm. you, you, you lose track of what happened. Yeah. And you can't really judge any. The other thing, you know, Tim Tim mentioned the cover letter a lot. As an editor, I hardly ever look at the cover letter. Yeah, it's all <laughs> online now. Yeah, uh, I just look at the abstract and I look at the paper, mm -hmm. and that's what I base my judgments mm -hmm. on. I mean, I may look at the cover letter if I look at the paper and go, "What the hell is this about?" Yeah. To see yeah. if they make some sort of argument <laughs> as to why it should be in the journal. But yeah, don't spend a whole lot of time on the cover letter. In fact, for JGR Oceans, it's not even required now yeah. to give a cover letter. Okay. So for the subject specific, that's yeah. for, ones, for more interdisciplinary, it's useful. For science and nature, you almost need to contact the editor and get approval to submit it before you even bother submitting it, mm -hmm. really. On the on the on the journal publications, uh, we talked a lot about you know where to send it, but but one of the big decisions you have to make in publications is whether you want it open access or not. And from my mind, you really need to talk to your advisor into ponying up the money for open access because that's going to get around a lot farther 
than uh, a closed access, you know, pay by subscription thing will ever get. And and I, I think it's worth the investment, you know, particularly if you you're starting your career, you want to get that out, you want to basically link it to your web page and all these things, and and uh, it's going to pay a lot of dividends if it's open access, and that's that's the nature of it. But uh, but it's a lot of money. Yeah, it's often How prohibitively expensive. It's a couple grand. Maybe. It it it, yeah, it depends on the journal. <laughs> it can be a lot. Uh, for JGR journals, it's an extra thirty five hundred dollars. <laughs> but. I, I so but 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 I but there are actually so so let's talk about open access oh, a little bit. No one has asked the question, but it came up. So you have to be careful about open access journals because there are certain open access journals that advertise as open access, uh, and a lot of them are very predatory. Uh, they say, "Oh, give us you know the five hundred dollar publication fee," and they want you to pay that when you submit the paper and then they will publish it. And it doesn't even go out for peer review, it's not a respected <coughs> journal. So stay away from those. There is one group of journals that are open access, uh, that are high quality, and those are the ones that are run by the European uh, Geosciences Union. Um, like there's Cryosphere is like the highest impact journal of uh, the cryospheric sciences, they have ocean sciences, it's not as high impact. It doesn't have as high an impact factor as JGR Oceans or Journal of Physical Oceanography <laughs> or Oceanography or, or those types of journals. But those journals are open access. You just pay the standard page charges, you know, somewhere between five hundred to a thousand dollars, and then it's open access. Uh, but for most of the American journals, they're still you have to pay extra to get open access. Although most have to be open access within like two years or one year after the publication. Um, and, and there are programs yeah. that, um, for example, libraries yeah. can help negotiate mm -hmm. getting uh, your open access yeah. fees waived. Yeah, and, 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 certain and we get requests from, and this is another thing, if your advisor doesn't have money and you want to publish a paper, you can contact the editor and we have a certain number of slots that we can waive the page charges for publication. Uh, but we have to decide that based on the mitigating factors. You know, if Gary comes and says he wants the page charges waived, waived for his student, come on Gary, you can get money for that. <laughs> I've never but, asked. But yeah, no. <laughs> uh, but the other thing with open access is you have to decide how important it is. How many citations you think, how, 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 how many people might want to download this journal mm -hmm. article. Um, because, you know, I have never paid the extra fee for open access. Uh, some of my co-authors have. And frankly, I don't think that it was worth it because 